It's Friday morning. You know what that means. It's time for another episode of the Alabama Slam Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Hanna. What's going on, guys? Patch Bakers. And I'm officially declaring myself as an entrant into the Royal Rumble. <laughs> What's up, Steven? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's going to be just you two next week for the Rumble. I will be in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico with a beverage in my hand. Um, and I hope I get to see the, the Rumble Saturday night. We're going to be – we're going down to Mobile – uh that day i'm gonna try to get checked into the hotel and and watch it that night because we leave out the next morning uh but yeah hopefully it'll be uh i think it'll be a good show but um we're gonna start this week with uh dynamite and since um we're gonna start with dynamite from last wednesday real quick couple of notes um, and we don't have to spend any more than 30 seconds on a couple of these <laughs> uh, a couple of these we can spend a little more time on but um the first note that I had was, uh, is Orange Cassidy dying his beard? And if so, is it only just to make it orange because he's more blind than anything these days? But it looks like he's dying his beard, and it looks fucking weird. Did y'all notice that? I haven't I noticed it. it. It's very orange in like certain spots. It's almost like he missed a couple. It's strange. I just noticed it on a couple of close-ups. And I'd, I hadn't noticed it in, like, previous weeks. I was like, what the fuck is happening here? Um, yeah, that's really all I wanted to point out was how weird it looks. Well, well, see, you can chime that into my next one of is Swerve turning into a vampire because all I noticed was that Swerve, they did that backstage interview, and he had his, uh, like, the super dark raccoon eyeliner on, and then when he smiled, the, the grill he was wearing looked like it had some fangs. I mean... He's doing that Robert Pattinson Batman eyeshadow uh, yeah. makeup trick yeah yeah his, his swerve has been getting the eyeshadow has been getting darker and darker and it's definitely a choice i don't know if it's a good choice but it's a choice it come out to my chemical romance <laughs> yeah. Yeah. whose house mcr's house <laughs> so so uh when villains get stupid and the note here says orange cassidy uh points it out on dynamite 2 so this is a reference to you had the undisputed kingdom come out it was roddy and 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 the kingdom after orange cassidy has just defended his title against i don't even remember who the heck he he fought against that week but it you know he he had had a match it had gone long enough that you know he had exerted himself and Roddy comes out and says, I'm going to fight you. And Orange Cassidy is like, all right, let's do it here. Immediately after a match where he's worn down and Roderick goes, no, 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 not right now. Six weeks from now, after you've had lots of time to rest up and heal up, instead of me just beating your ass and taking the title from you right now when you're worn down. How dumb do you have to be as a villain to 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 to, to push things off? And I get he's getting heat in the sense of I'm not wrestling in front of this town, but still... Yeah, that seemed kind of weird to me, too. I, I noticed that as well. Um, like, what's the point of that? Like, so we just obviously know that everything that takes place in the next six weeks is a, a holdover match. but Not a holdover, but just like a a whatever match for Cassidy. It's like, we know he's not losing any of these in the next few weeks, right? If they've got a match scheduled for the title in six weeks, then nothing's happening with the title. Right. They got one coming up on Saturday. Well, sure. But I mean, it, if you're you're the bad guy, take advantage of things. And he's like, it's is like the the moment they put him back into this 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 mix with with Adam Cole and such. You took something that was solid with that neck strong and and him getting over, and you have just made him just a screaming moron. Sure. I yeah, did I mean, notice I, that last week. He, I was, go ahead, Patrick. I, I mean, I said from the get-go that the, the person that the Undisputed Kingdom should be feuding against first should be Roderick Strong, the babyface Roderick Strong, who felt jaded by his friend Adam Cole, who left him out of the group. But they instead didn't do that. Now they're doing this whatever. I mean, it's the same group that Adam Cole's been in since he's been on television, mainstream television, and it's just not working. I mean, we'll get to uh, last night. The, they come out, the crowd couldn't give less of a damn that they're out there. Yep. And, you know, they're supposed to be this 
bad guy villain group, but yet the leader is on crutches and they haven't beat anybody up at all. And they have titles that don't mean anything. And their heater is in long ass matches with guys that should not be in long ass matches with. And has no charisma. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know what they do with this group. But uh, yeah, Orange Cassidy had a backstage interview with Renee and he's like, yeah, I was ready to fight you, but I guess I'll wait six weeks. But in the meantime, I'm going to fight everybody else. And when the when, when Orange Cassidy is calling you out for stupidity, <laughs> you, you, got, you got to question what you're doing with your life. Yeah, yeah. So the, the next note on, on here says Adam Page is lying to himself. What do you mean by that? So this is, we had the backstage promo with him where he's talking, uh, He uh, I think Swerve interjected himself into that one too. And, and Swerve was talking about how, you know, I, I, I think uh, I, I think about how we fought and how I beat you. And Adam's response is, but I never think about you. I don't even spend a moment of my time thinking about you. And everything from, since the moment he has gone into that baby's room and done something with the with to, to promote on the baby, Adam has been feuding with this guy, and then suddenly, and I get it's a badass line that he's just trying to you know make himself you know get over, but it's a stupid line when everything you have done since then revolves around this guy. So why are you why are you saying that I've never even think about you when everything you do is is dedicated to ruining his life? You just spent promos two weeks ago or however many weeks ago, right before World's End, talking about how you were going to make sure this guy never saw a title opportunity because you were going to make it his mission to, to keep him away from everything and ruin his life. But I'm not thinking about you. I'm not thinking about y'all. I mean, valid point. I think that was intentional, though. I think that, that I think we were supposed to, like, as an audience, catch that, that he's lying to himself and that that's not the case. Hopefully, now, if they're smart about it, they will... You know that will be part of a storyline going forward because you have to think Swerve and Hangman Page are going to get back in the ring. They're probably going to be part of a triple threat at Revolution. Uh, so yeah, I did catch that too, but I called of it more as like, oh, that it what to me it wasn't a badass line. It was like the, he, the character is lying to himself, and we the audience know that, and it's going to come back to bite him in the ass because he is going to be all consumed with beating Swerve instead of probably going after the title. Like that, that that's yeah. probably how Samoa Joe is going to escape revolution still with the title is that Hangman's um, obsession of beating Swerve is going to get is going to cloud his judgment and end up costing him the match. At least that's right. That's the way I would see it going down now. Right. Who knows what the hell they do, but um, <laughs> Hangman for as sort of inept as he was for most of last year i do feel like they have done a good job re-establishing him as a guy that matters on the show and they don't yeah. have many of them left with mjf gone and with like omega out hangman now sort of feels not as hot as what he was when he was chasing the title but he he definitely feels like a main player again instead of just a dude that would sometimes have matches you know for much of last year yeah, and you can say the same thing about Swerve, though, because I and I think this goes back to them not capitalizing on things when they could have capitalized on things. I think while I, I'm I'm happy that Eddie has the belt, I still say that Swerve would have been a better title holder for that Continental Classic, because if you go into last night's uh, Dynamite. He's not. He doesn't have the same reaction that he once would. And mind you, that could be the crowd. That could be whatever. But he's not pulling it like he he used to either. They're not getting behind him anymore. You talking about Swerve? Mm. Yeah. I think last night was just a bad crowd. I think last night was was like an all time awful crowd. I said before we started recording, it sounded like they were wrestling in a church or in a library. <laughs> uh, it was just whenever you can hear. Like the guys walk in the ring and you can hear the ring, like the sounds of it. That's a bad sign. Like that's like high school gym, 15 people sort of attendance. And they're in an arena on television. 
the best example I saw I heard of that was during the uh, Tony Storm uh, Diana promo when Tony and Mariah were running off and just on that stage all you could it was like a high school production of something and they were storming off and you could just it, it was hilarious to me yeah yeah I want to move on to the uh, Hook and Samoa Joe match. Uh, I'm sure Patrick's got some thoughts on this. So my my notes say, you know, that I love a good underdog, but did they have to let Hook go this hard? Uh, he kicked out of, um, at one after a muscle buster. Most folks never kick out of a muscle buster, and they let this motherfucker kick out at one. The what, are we, out, what are we doing here? The kicking out at one should be used sparingly. And it should be used in the most high-profile matches that you could possibly do as a company. The fact that they let Hook do this in a match that nobody gives a shit about is absurd to me. And I do not... Listen, like I said last week, is this dude going to be a good professional wrestler in six years? Maybe. Probably. I don't know. He's not one now. Even in the match. That's an all-time carry job by Samoa Joe. Hook was completely out of place for most most spots in the match. There were numerous spots where Samoa Joe literally had to pick him up because he was waiting for him to like feed into him. It's little things like that that wrestling takes a long time to get just decent at it. Not even good, but just decent to where you understand. And, it, and it's one of the few art forms that like you can't practice. You know, like you can be a good guitar player before you ever play a show in front of people because you can just sit in your room and practice forever and ever. You can't do that with wrestling. You Sure, you can learn the moves, you can run the ropes, but to actually master the art form of professional wrestling, you have to do it in front of an audience because the audience participation is what separates professional wrestling from a lot of other art forms. Hook yeah, doesn't he have ain't that. Nick, he ain't Nick Wayne. He ain't been on the indies for the last five years, right? No, and so a lot of the match, like... For what they had to work with, it was probably as good of a match as what they could do. But I don't understand the fascination with let's portray Hook as this badass. Yeah, he's he's not a badass type of character. I mean, you can his pedigree only carries him so far over what is actually presented when the the rubber meets the road, and he is he he's not a believable badass. Not even right. yeah, and like again. The, the recklessness of Hook kind of added somewhat to the match because Samoa Joe was, I mean, the, the, the spot into the announce table. Uh, the reason Hook lands like that is because Hook doesn't jump high enough to get into the thing and then he fucking damn near breaks the top of his back on the announce table. Now, it looked cool. It looked like Samoa Joe was ragdolling his ass because he actually was. But yeah, the, the muscle buster spot, I wouldn't even been mad if he kicked out at two necessarily. But the fact that he kicks out at one yeah, and then Samoa Joe beats him, and then Hook keeps getting up, and then Adam Page comes out, and Hook keeps getting up, and you end the show with Hook's fucking music playing. What the heck? What are we doing? That we're leading up to Samoa Joe and and Hangman Page, and then not only that, Dynamite from this past Wednesday kicks off. Here comes Samoa Joe, he's doing his promo, and then fucking Hook interrupts. And the crowd doesn't even cheer for Hook. The crowd is cheering for Samoa Joe. And this dude, <laughs> his promo, like, you won, I lost. Well, no shit, man. I was watching the show. Get I don't know screen. where, I don't know when, but someday we'll be back together again. Okay, sure. Not, not today. You think, you think in your Batman, you're you're three inches shorter than this dude and 125 pounds weight, weighs less than this dude. And you don't look like a star right now because you're 23. Like, I, I, it's, it, what, I mean, it blows my mind. And the only reason I think they did this is because I think Tony Khan has this little heart on with like trying to stick it to the WWE all the time. And so, like, the whole Hook, Jinder Mahal thing, if none of that would have happened, Hook probably doesn't come out this week, but whatever. He wants to judo toss some security guards around. It's just, it's abs- beyond absurd and stupid. See, I, I love that because they you had like a handful of people that tried to start that hook chant and then the crowd just chimes in. So it's they're shouting hook, hook, which suddenly becomes Joe, Joe, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
was like, this is this this is just apropos of what this this kid is right now. He's he's being shoved out front as as a martyr, and he's he's not ready to 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 get up there yet. He should be he should be trying to do that 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 TNA the international what what the the the, the mid rank title at best. And for the love of all that is holy, stop pretending the FTW belt is a belt. Oh my goodness! I, I, I why doesn't Joe have that belt right now? He beat the champion. Yeah, like what's the point? And again, I don't put the blame on Hook. I put the blame on management and Tony Khan and people who are putting him in this position. Right. Again, right. he should be nowhere close to that world champion. It's it's insane. So let's get into Dynamite from last night. Um, Sting's retirement, uh, just a plan to get the tag titles on the Bucks. I mean, a, is that a Stephen question? That 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 is. I mean, you saw the promo last night from from Darby and Sting. You saw Big Bill and and Starks's reply. I don't think that match is is the match you're going to see at Revolution. So you're so what so what you're saying the Bucks will get the title. Somebody somebody will get the titles, like Sting and them get the titles first, is that what you're saying? And then the yep. Bucks turn around and get it. Yep. Because I mean they're not gonna they're not gonna have him vacate the title on the way out. Sting's old right. enough that he goes out on his back. I mean, to me this feels like just a a a, a half hearted way to get the the titles back to their quote unquote rightful owners. I mean, I'm kind of tired of seeing the belts on the Bucks. They got plenty of people those belts could be on at this point, right? I'll play devil's advocate here, though. At least the Bucks are doing something now with their characters. At least it's not just like <laughs> Super Kick Party and Neon and all this kind of stuff. At least they're kind of running in the direction of people think we're assholes and like we lord our power as EVPs over everybody. We might as well put it on screen. Now, it's a much more effective character trait if there's one Mr. CM Punk that's still in the CM company Punk, that yeah. you could use to pay this off. But, like, the pencil mustaches, they they kind of look like Vince McMahon now with his mustache. Call me by my full my, by my full given name, you know, Matthew <laughs> and Nicholas. Yeah, Our I'm, passport names. <laughs> yeah. So it's, a, it's at least something. It's at least not the old bucks that we've seen. now. I mean, yeah, I'm, but wait, do we need the titles on them? I mean, if it if it comes around to Young Bucks and FTR, then sure, it, that needs some uh, but, titles. But see, that you'd have to interrupt FTR and House of Black Part Thirty Eight to, to to get anywhere near that. Well, hopefully, we pay that off Saturday. Oh, at, at this point, I, I don't know, man. This feels like Randy Orton, John Cena at this stage. Well, I, I'm I'm ready to see both parties move on to something else. But uh, yeah, it is very curious that. Sting and Darby call out the tag team champs, uh, you know, six weeks before pay per view, where Sting's about to have his last tag team match against the Bucks. So we will see. So the next note is about the bangers that the Bucks mentioned backstage. So I, and I didn't get to see last night, so I'm not sure what's happening there. So you had the the Bucks come through. They show up late. They get handed the uh, the breakdown of the show, and uh, was it Matthew points on? He he's got the thing. He's oh that's a banger, and he double point toward the end of the thing. He says that's a banger. Having watched Dynamite, what 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 two do you think he thought were going to be bangers? Yeah, I didn't see it last night, so Probably I don't know. I did see the card, and I wasn't impressed by the card. Probably Swerve and Hardy. And then I'm guessing Copeland and Suzuki, but I don't know. Yeah, nothing last night qualified as a banker. Although it did crack me up that they meet top flight backstage and they're like, Did you guys just get here? Like, well, we've been here since one. They're like, No credentials. Like, we'll, we'll find you, but you know, hey, good job. And they give them fist bumps. Like, yeah. again, if they're going to run with that, I'm, it's at least interesting. It's, it's something for them to do. Yeah. But. I think it's, how come you're not in your gear? I don't know. Look at the breakdown in your hand, dumbass. Am I scheduled to wrestle today? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, And then they even cut to a shot of them backstage. They had the headsets on with the monitors in front of the little production thing. Whenever, who was it? It was Darby and Sting uh, talking about how they wanted to That's go for right. the uh, the tag times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was funny. 
So, I mean, they're, they're, that, they're showing us that's going to be the revolution match more than likely still. So to me, if you, you got Ricky and, and Big Bill saying, yeah, we're, we're down for this. They didn't say a date or a time, but I, I'm guessing it has to be somewhere before revolution. It's two weeks. They ran a little uh, stinger at the bottom. Oh, did they? Yeah, so it's, it's yeah, two weeks from now is the They ran a match. stinger for Sting, huh? Yeah. I still so, maintain that Sting should be going up against Samoa Joe, but I beat that like a dead horse. That should be the main event, but, you know, I digress. If you were Hangman or Swerve, who would you pick? So we got the, the backstage moment after they both won their respective matches this time uh, where – during the middle of an interview where it doesn't seem like Renee gets any information, she suddenly has information that they're going to be in a, a dealer's choice match where they each get to pick each other's partner. So if you were Hangman or Swerve, who would you pick to face your, your opponent? Because <sighs> hmm. unfortunately, I'm pretty sure one of them is going to be Brian Cage. And that's not what I want. That's what it, not anybody wants. But he's your go-to guy when you need somebody that looks big to, to take a fall. The thing with that is, is he doesn't have an impressive record. And we'll get to rankings in a minute. But, like, he's a big dude and he beats the shit out of people, but he never wins. I mean, he won for a little bit while they had the six-man titles or whatever, but... That's gone. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, Patrick, you got any thoughts on it? Uh, other than the fact that this is a stupid booking, uh, no, not really. Like, this <laughs> just not, why do this? Why do this? I don't understand the need to be like, okay, you're going to pick, you know, you'll pick each other's opponents. Also, I'm assuming the opponent has to agree to it, right? Because if I was <laughs> Swerve, I would just pick Samoa Joe or John Moxley or one of the like top names. See, that's that's my two. I'd say you know I'd throw Daniel Bryan or uh, or uh, whatever is it, Brian Danielson, whatever the hell he's going by in in, in here, and uh, or John Moxley to to whoop somebody's ass, or Eddie Kingston. You throw one of those three out there just because you know if they beat them, they beat them, but you know you're going to get an ass whipping either way. Yeah, yeah, but if I'm if I'm Eddie Kingston, I just say no, why would I do? What do I get out of it? No, I don't want to do that. That's stupid. See, I don't know if you get. I don't know if you, if you, if they have to agree, then one hundred percent it's Brian Cage. Yeah. So again, there are better ways to have these two men continually stay in each other's orbit for these six weeks without having to do these convoluted things that so many logic questions get brought up. Where you're like, well, how does that actually work? Like, you know, in the kayfabe of the show. How, how do they, how do you pull that off? So, uh, I don't have any real good answer. I'm I'm in the same boat with you guys. Like I would throw in Mox or somebody, but like Patrick said, why would they want to agree to that other than just to have a fight? I mean, Eddie would probably do it. Just be like, yeah, fuck it, I'll fight anybody. I mean, Mox cut a promo in the back talking about how he's just going to go out there and kick people's asses just for fun and, and shits and giggles. So maybe he'll agree to it. So the last note we have for AEW for the week is that the rankings are back, but it's all crap. I'm assuming that that's got a that's a Stephen comment. I know 100%, that. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. It's a Stephen comment. Rankings reset on the beginning of the year. Everybody's back to zero. So we're going off rankings. Yet the first person who gets a title shot is a guy that has a twenty-eight and one ranking. Which, if you're going, if they're resetting at the beginning of the year, he doesn't have a twenty-eight and one ranking. So what's the even point of having Hook out there because he doesn't have that rank? Same thing with Darby and Sting. The rankings reset at the beginning of the year. They are no longer twenty-seven and one. So they go into title shot for no point. They are zero and zero just as much as anybody else. Thunder well, just, just to be fair, those were booked before the rankings was announced. That, the, the rankings are today. They haven't got that match yet. They're getting that match two weeks from now. But it was announced before that. Like the the hook thing was announced two weeks ago before they announced that the rankings were back. Right. I'll I'll give you that. But the Thund the Darby and Sting they should be back to zero. Thunder Rosa came out. They say she's two and zero. It, she's only wrestled her first singles match on Collision on Saturday. There is no show between Collision. and and dynamite that she got an extra win. They're now counting the fact that she was in the 
the eight man tag party for the for the the coming home show where she didn't even get the win as one of her wins. Okay, it's, that's all, it, it's if you're gonna BS on some of this, you can't BS on on, on you got to BS on all of it, or 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 not pretend like this is what we're actually doing. You just got to lean into the the fact that it's all crap and we're not really sure what we're doing because it's garbage. I had kind of forgotten about rankings, uh, and then when they were like the rankings are back, I was like, oh, I just thought this. They just kind of quietly went away, and I was like, they never talk about them really anymore, and I I didn't put much thought into it, and then all of a sudden they're like. The rankings are back. I don't, whatever. I don't know, whatever. And then it came out that, like, apparently the rankings went away because Punk told Tony that, like, the the rankings should go away. And probably what Punk was referring to is, if you'll remember, for much of, was it last year, FTR was number one in the tag team rankings, but for some comical reason just couldn't get a title shot, probably because the Bucks were the tag team title holders. So, like, either the rankings are going to matter and you should do it, or the rankings don't matter, and just go ahead and let it be, you know, don't use them. I, I'm still cool right. with, like, keeping the win-loss record on people's graphics when they come up. That's kind of cool, whatever. But, like, to place these people in rankings, like, here's the champions, and here's number one, and number two, and number three. Like, if you're if it's not going to make any sense about when you're getting a title shot, who's going to get a title shot, or if you're not going to gain the rankings. Because, like, for instance, tw- Hook was 28-1, and one, but yet out of those 28 people he beat, I don't know if anyone was actually a mainstay on the roster. They were all nobodies. So, like, that has to count for something, right? Or it should, at least. You know, a win over John Moxley counts way more as a win over, like, Sonny Kiss or whoever. <laughs> right. So, I mean, yeah, they brought it up on Dynamite like this was a big deal, but it's not a big deal. It's honestly probably going to be just even more of a case for us to be like, what the fuck are they doing? And all it's leading to is the continuation of matches that nobody gives a crap about. Does anybody care about Lee Moriarty versus John Moxley, where John Moxley is going to get a win so he can have an extra win when it comes time to put him in the rankings? And then when he's done with Lee Moriarty, I guess he'll go through Sean Taylor. And then, we'll, you know, those two will then move on to the next person that needs some wins and, and they'll do the same thing. And Trent Beretta will, will continue to, to eat pins until, you know, somebody eventually he needs a win to get over something. I mean, it's, you got so many jobber matches and it's, it's killing me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, valid points, but you're a little ma- more mad at it than I think. <laughs> Patrick. <and> I <laughs> yeah. <are. laughs> I feel like this got stuck in your crawl real it good. Did. It did. I, I love the idea of rankings, but I, I hate the idea of how they're doing them because I I need you to stay true to your universe. And you, you're already just with, with – because the Sting-Darby match, they just asked for it on Wednesday. Those rankings had been out before then. They are not 27 and 0. They are 0 at this stage because they haven't had a match. So you, you you can't have be resetting everybody except the people that you don't want to reset, and you can't just give random wins that are not singles to people in order to boost their stats. Keep it real in your universe, and I'll be fine. Let's switch gears then into into SmackDown. Um, get into WWE for about a half hour before we get out of here. Uh, I, I watched SmackDown the other night. Um, the only note that I really made was that it was an RKO fest at the end. And that was kind of fun. Uh, just to see Orton out there, like anybody that was in the ring got it. At, you know, at one point, I forgot who the last one was. I was like, well, maybe they'll avoid it. No, they got it too. Uh, so that was kind of fun. Um, I didn't think much else happened or much else that was interesting to me. Um, but we've got notes here about the SmackDown title scene with Rock, Orton, Styles, and Rhodes, and then in parentheses, Knight and KO in the wings. We. This is just my thoughts leading into Survivor Series and and as we get on the road to WrestleMania here. This, while we give credit to to AEW for having Swerve and in theory Cole and uh, Page all circling Joe and throw in hook if you really want to, to to get in there that they have multiple people all kind of circling like sharks around that title 
I like that's I'm going to give the same praise to to WWE on SmackDown for the fact that you've got potentially four or five different people that might come out of the the Survivor Series with an opportunity to go take that title off of Roman. And, and there's some, I mean, th there's a lot of variety to choose from. It's a good time to 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 be watching this stuff to me. Yeah, the end of the show was really good. Um, again, I think Nick Aldis is absolutely brilliant in his role as the authority figure on that show. Uh, he's believable. He comes off as a no-nonsense type of guy. He's a good fool for Paul Heyman. Uh, he's also a good fool for Roman Reigns because he, he, you know, can look him right out of eye. They're both physically intimidating, so there's no reason for all this to back down. And then, yeah, we have L.A. Knight, we have Styles, we have Randy Orton. Uh, they're going to be in this four-way at the Rumble. Uh, and then, obviously, one Mr. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has kind of made it known on WWE television that he also might be interested in calling himself the head of the table. So for Roman, yeah, it's getting a little a little cloudy here. I will say that I think at the Rumble, they really need to sh remind us that Roman Reigns is a badass and can do this on his own. If he comes out of this match yet again with the title, uh, winning, keeping the title by way of like Jimmy and Solo interfering. I mean, it's just the same old, same old. Like he, for most of his run, the at the very beginning when it was just like wreck everyone and leave before it was a bloodline, he was a badass. But for the most part of this title run, he has been the cronies do all the work and he gets the pin at the end. Um, so, uh, you know, with this being a four way, I think here's the opportunity for Roman to submit himself as some kind of badass as he goes onto his road uh, to WrestleMania, be it against Cody Rhodes or The Rock or whoever. Yeah. Um, you got any other thoughts on SmackDown, or do we want to go ahead and move on into Raw? I don't even know what else happened on what else happened on SmackDown. There's some shit with the LWO that I don't care about. I didn't even know that. Uh, what's his face switched tag team partners. I didn't yeah. recognize that they were other guys. Yeah, they they are the Los Lotharios. So that was <laughs> that, uh, yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> um, let's see what else did we we had uh, Logan Paul uh, 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 doing a KO. So we got that going on. Oh, that was entertaining. That was good. That was a funny back and forth. Um, Logan we had... Paul is so effortlessly good at this, by the way. Yep, it's it's unfair how just a natural he is at wrestling. I think I talked about a couple weeks ago, like you can just watch people and be like, oh, this person gets wrestling or this person doesn't understand what wrestling is. I don't know if Logan, I don't think he was a wrestling fan growing up, but I guess it's just because wrestling is kind of close to social media and it's kind of close to boxing. He just gets what this thing is supposed to be. And, you know, when he's on the microphone, he is just such a whiny little bitch that you just want somebody to beat the shit out of him and beat it, the shit out of him and it's it makes for such good television um we had the return to form from we lost the butch moniker we got pete dunn back as they uh, him and tyler bates took on uh pretty deadly which i'm excited to see him get back to his bruiser weight character because i enjoyed that a lot more than the the crazy wild man thing he was doing um Trying to think what else we had. I think that was I think the that was take. Mostly, yeah. yeah, that's all I remember yeah. was the Butch. You, thing. you had a female tag team title thing. You had uh, AJ and uh, uh, LA Knight that went nowhere because the bloodline came out and then that led into your RKO Fest. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Raw, the title scene, uh, we've got listed there Gunther, Punk, Drew, Priest with Sammy. Um, Jay and Cody in the wings. Because Cody could go either way. So, I mean, we we got the breakdown because obviously uh, we, we got the news that uh, Seth has a grade two MCL tear and a meniscus. I'm sorry, it was a grade two menis meniscus and MCL damage in his knee. So he's choosing to go rehab 
instead of uh, surgery. So he is going to try to make WrestleMania, which is shifting a whole bunch of moving parts. So Gunther comes out and tells him, that's fine. I look forward to whipping your ass. I'm going to win the Royal Rumble and I'm going to challenge you. And then I'm going to beat the shit out of your knee and your back and everything else on you that hurts because I'm an asshole. But I'm telling you to your face that I'm an asshole. I mean, I'm good with that. Also, it's a good dichotomy, too, because Seth hasn't been champion for that long, and his body's already starting to break down, and Gunther has now been on this historic run where he's beaten all of these people with kind of no help, and he still looks like a million bucks. So there was that. That, that wasn't, like, spoken. That I, I wish Gunther would have, like, said that because that was running through my mind as it was going on. It's like, oh, Seth, here he goes again. Like, every time he gets the title, it seems like you know the the knee goes or something on his body breaks down and gunther's just been carrying that intercontinental title um and yeah it seems like it seems like they're setting up a couple different things because they're trying to come up with some kind of contingency plan in case seth can't go yep so if if seth can't go i think they're going to do cm punk and cody rhodes i think so too uh, and I think that that's what that promo was all about, which I want to talk about that promo in depth uh, oh, here in well, just a second. It was yes. Fantastic. But, um, you know, SmackDown has its own little, like, title scene. I, like, I don't think any of those guys that's in the, the four-way match with Reigns are going to be in the Rumble. So I think the, the last four of the Rumble will probably come down to my, my pick would be Cody, Punk, Drew, and probably and Brock, Brock Lesnar. Oh, so you're not even putting Gunther in there, huh? I don't think Gunther, no. Uh, because I think that that's... If they're going to do Gunther and Brock Lesnar, <laughs> this is where they do it at the Rumble. And Brock eliminates Gunther. And he's one of the last four guys that are standing. Um, but so if, you, yeah. if, you, if you're if doing Seth, though, you got to have Gunther at that four. No, no because I think that they'll... I don't think there's any way for Gunther. I, I think this was just a way to get Gunther on the show and to, again, to have people kind of circling around Seth, but I don't think there's any, there's any plans now that Punk's back in the company to do Gunther and Seth. Maybe there was before Punk came back, but see, I think I, that's I, just a way to get him out there. See, I think at this stage, because of, because of this, I think they're going to hold the Punk... Seth match that that's potentially there till he is in a state where he can deliver on what he wants to deliver. Um, there has been this week has brought some dramatic news that I think upsets a lot of the apple carts of where where stories end and where stories begin. I, I no longer think that uh, I, I, I've been telling you for a while that I, I didn't think Cody was going to finish the story at WrestleMania. And I thought Roman was going to carry that all the way up until through September. But I think having Gunther come out there definitely puts him at the forefront. If you want a a match with Seth Rollins where he's not 100%, you feed him to Gunther, who then beats the living holy hell out of him. And then you, you've got that other scene that you can play with, whether that's Drew Priest or whatever. Maybe I mean hell. Maybe the maybe we we still got the elimination chamber we to to get through. So maybe you know Seth doesn't even make it to there. Ah, uh, yeah, they they're prop. They should just strip. They'll just strip him if they're not going to be like they're. I think that they're going to wait. I, I don't think there'll be anything that's going to be done with the elimination chamber with Seth's title. I don't think anything's going to happen there. I mean, we still got that briefcase. <laughs> That's uh, well, and here's the thing: if someone legitimate was holding the briefcase, this would be the perfect time to to, sure. to, to do it. The briefcase, in and of itself, is a uh, break break glass in case of emergency narrative device. But um, no, I think that they'll make the call with Seth. Probably, you know, they'll know a month out from WrestleMania if he could go or not. And then I think it's just a if he can't go, Seth comes out in tears, and they take the title from him and. You set up whoever wins the Rumble. I think Punk's going to win the Rumble. And so you do a Punk and Cody for the vacant title. Um, But, um, uh, yeah. But then that that would mean you'd have to do Rock and Roman. Um, 
And I know those reports you were talking about, but like then it came back out. Justin Brasso from Sports Illustrated was like, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but he rescinded the reporting because he was like, I was purposely fed false information. So I think they're kind of putting it out there that Cody's not going to finish the story to get more fan support on the side. He actually is going to finish the story hmm. at WrestleMania. The, the the idea that the first event on Netflix, I mean, the, the, the elephant in the room, obviously, WWE Raw is going to Netflix in 2025. Uh, to me, that is going to be one of their biggest shows that they do just because it's going to be a, a a monumentous kind of change. I mean, that's 250 million people that have the potential to watch that. And it may be more between now and 2025 because, you know, they've got a year to, to add a couple more million people to, to, to Netflix's roster. And it, that, that's a hell of a way to, to get somebody's eyes on it as if that's the end of the, the, the bloodline. So you think this thing goes so- on for another year? I think this thing goes on for another year, man. Bro, nah. buddy, I'm fucking out. <laughs> I'll check out if it, if he's still holding it at WrestleMania. I'm checking out till the summer. I don't, <laughs> I don't. I'll watch the things. It's time, man. Everybody. It's not that he looks tired, but the steam that was behind Roman just isn't there anymore. This is well, not the-, the 1980s where you saw Hulk Hogan five times a year and that was it like we are inundated with wwe content and just content in general constantly and this thing has felt uh, just overdrawn to the point of like i just want to see anybody but roman honestly it's not even a roman thing if roman was on tv every week that might be one thing but the title just isn't there it just disappears right and everyone seems to be kind of just okay with that. Like, Nick Aldis in this new role should not be okay with the champion not being around for most of the time. 100%, and I think that's part of the storyline that gets told from from WrestleMania to probably Survivor Series or, you know, on. But I, I they have an opportunity to erase a part of their legacy that has been kind of i mean I'm, I'm, if you can get hulk hogan's name off of uh, off of something you got to go for it just because of how tarnished that man anything that comes up with him he's he, he's got too much baggage that comes with it i think they use that opportunity to to kind of push that away so they can focus on this current generation yeah but well, let, let's move ahead because well go ahead well these thought. well these reigns the the like title reign thing these are all just like no one knows like if I asked you like give me the top 10 longest title reigns for the heavyweight champion this isn't like baseball where like Mm -hmm. 715 is a historic (laughs) number I can't even tell you what Hulk Hogan's reign how long it lasts it is this it's all just wrestling is it's you know make believe you're just making this shit up it doesn't actually mean Hulk Hogan was the best wrestler because he held it for the longest time (laughs) you just let him hold it for that time this is not what this is indicative of he was just fucking popular selling a lot of merchandise in the 1980s. Yeah, yep. so like I don't understand their obsession with like the the length of time because this goes back to my beef with with the rankings in AEW. They have a set of rules that they want to focus on in here and that is that these title links don't do matter. So they they have to pretend that it's something more than just the fact that Hogan was selling merchandise people wanted to, were, were were paying to see his ass in a seat to see him overcome odds so you have to go with that narrative logic in order to continue to to believe have your believable universe well if they think that I'm stupid enough to give a shit about this after March at WrestleMania they've completely fucking uh overestimated the the patience of their audience cuz I mean, I'm already tired of it, and we're not there yet. And I'm no, I'm sure I'm not the only one. And like Patrick said, the, the fucking title needs to be on TV if it's going to be a thing. And you got plenty of other people that can carry this shit for a while. Speaking of, Pipe Bombs and American Dreams is the next note on here. Let's get into those promos from the other night. Who wants to go first? Go for it, Patrick. I, I thought this was absolutely incredible. Uh, for here is what WWE does well. They make moments feel 
like moments. And that is something AEW feel, they they did it somewhat early on. But like when WWE is doing this, it's it's unparalleled. Like these two guys were just literally standing in the ring and the crowd was chanting holy shit. And it felt like a moment. And then both of these guys delivered. Like, um, you know, Punk has really, for lack of a better word, infused an element of reality to this show. And I think that's what everyone's kind of been feeding off of, just given mm-hmm. his his baggage and his backstory and fans knowing where he came from and all this kind of stuff like that. Um, we, we are all waiting. We, we know he's a train wreck. We're just waiting to, to see what part of the, the, the railroad that he's going to come off of. And until then, we will sit along for that ride. But we're all having that shot in front of, of, of wanting to see him just total meltdown because he's so great when he meltdowns. <laughs> And just, you know, they, they were smart here in that they didn't reference AEW explicitly. But if you know, you know what Punk's talking about when he says, are we going to be friends Sunday morning because I can separate personal from business. Can you? Because mm-hmm. remember, Cody's last promo in AEW, that was a, you know, he can say whatever he wants to say. That was a direct shot at CM Punk. And he basically replayed the hits from that promo in this promo where he said, you sat up there in your pipe bomb and you talked about creating a revolution and I'm actually the guy that did all that stuff so I'm more CM Punk than you which is true Dang, by the way yeah. And, yeah 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 and so um and you know then again like like Steven said you you know the train wreck that is CM Punk and so when he takes off the hoodie you're like are they gonna get physical now like can he not hold it in and you know them going nose to nose to end it the whole thing was just incredible and it, it's it made for great television and if you're AEW and you're Tony Khan specifically uh, again what a failure this was because both of these guys were in your company and they'd never cross paths the- and again this this goes to the fact that like when CM Punk walked into AEW he should have been immediately feuding with Cody Rhodes like when the Hardys came into AEW they should have immediately went after the Young Bucks like you can't wait for these things because you don't know what's going to happen. So WWE's like, CM Punk's come right back, boom, he's in the ring with Cody Rhodes. Boom, he's in the ring with Drew McIntyre. He's in the ring with all these guys. Like, for as much as we love Darby Allen or I love Darby Allen, he's not feuding with a mid-carder here. He's going after the big right. dogs. So, um, yeah, I, I thought I thought it was absolutely great. And, and they missed twice at AEW this because he could have been right coming in, could have been feuding with Cody and had they just pulled their 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 desire to make money together enough this him versus the bucks and and the elite and all that could have been you could have been printing money with this thing and and yet here we are yeah i mean we've 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 yelled that a thousand times (laughs) like that could be the dumbest thing that they ever did was if they didn't pull it together and and make some fucking money off of it they never did because The as Punk was fucking right, the bunk the Bucks he works with a fucking bunch of babies, right? And you know I mean, it could have be you know this could potentially I don't not saying that AEW is going to fold as a company, but like that might have been the death nail of AEW because we've seen what attendance is doing, we've seen what ticket sales are doing, like for as much as you know CM Punk and Cody Rhodes set the internet on fire you could have done the exact same thing with like Steven said punk in the bucks the internet would have went up yeah. in flames and it probably would have been even better because you don't have to adhere to these PG guidelines and there's not as much scripting and you could just if you got these four guys in a room in the bucks and punk and omega you could have said hey just let the bombs fly whatever you want to say we're trying to make money and that, that would have made for some captivating stuff but for you know for whatever reason that didn't happen and now um you know, the biggest live entertainment company in the world is going to take that story and that same sort of sentiment and they're going to run with it and they're going to blow it up and make it a spectacle. And, and yep. it's, it's, and I'm, I'm 100% with you. This was, this promo was everything you wanted it to be in between these two people. And again, it, it got personal real quick because, I mean, you got Punk out there going, yeah, your dad called me. Didn't know if you could make it told me to watch out for you 
and sure, you know, you handled yourself well, but the fact that you had that, that your daddy called me to make sure that you were, you know, being taken care of, you, sh you should be worried about what that meant to me and not to you. And for Cody, Dang. it's it's yet another opponent who has made this personal. You know, a couple months ago, I guess it was earlier this year, last year, when he had the uh, when Paul Heyman did something similar, where he like was almost crying and invoked Dusty Rhodes' name, uh, and then he had that that great one liner, and then Cody just kind of backed him up to the corner, and he was like, you know, I'm just a wrestler trying to win a wrestling title, but for some reason, everyone keeps making this personal. So uh, that's that's sort of a great little thing too, and that's a you know it it charts the story along, it it, it pushes forward Cody's narrative arc as he gets closer to finishes his story hopefully at wrestlemania not fucking netflix in january but um it makes me incredibly sad the opportunity that is missed by having cody and wwe when you have christian cage the ultimate father figure over there not being able to say these very things to him because man that man knows how to tear down a father a, da a daddy issue <laughs> yeah for sure um Real quick, give me a minute or two on Ready, Willing, and Gable because I want to spend a couple minutes on the last things before we get out. Chad Gable is one of the most underrated wrestlers in WWE of all times. That man can go. You can put him in with you know small guys, middle guys, or 355 pounds of, 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 of meat, and he will toss them bitches around and make it look amazing. And the fact that he doesn't have a title around his a, a singles title around his waist it is is a travesty. Were you on the show when we did the when he and Gunther had their big match? I were you maybe I, I, that, they all blend together. Unfortunately, it feels like that may have been like right before you started with yeah because we were in our in my uh, dining room. And then no, definitely no. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we talked. That was one of the better matches of the year for WWE. I thought um, for last year. Um, I won't give you any argument on that. Uh, you know, Patrick and I raved about his match with Gunther. I, I kind of thought at one point they might actually let him get it off of Gunther, but um, he still got it. So what will they do with will will Gunther have? Are they going to let somebody beat him before he does this thing with Seth, or is he going to have the Intercontinental and possibly the World Championship? I mean, we didn't touch on that earlier. I, I would assume that he has to. They make him vacate it, maybe. Uh, okay. Pull a Samoa Joe. So next up is Royal Rumble surprises. Um, I don't think it'll be any surprise to see Andrade there. Do you guys have any other guesses for who else we might see? Brock. <clears throat> Brock's going to be I'm, number 30. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. I think Sean Spears is number 10. <laughs> sure. So yeah, Andrade, Sean Spears, and uh, Brock Lesnar. And I think Brock makes it, like I said, I think Brock eliminate. If they're going to do Gunther and Brock, this is where you set it up. I think yeah. Gunther probably starts number one. I, I would either, assume so. Yeah, I think he was number one last year. So you try to get him to break his own record. I, uh, I, the difference here is I, I think unlike last year, he wins. You think Gunther so you wins the Royal Gunther. Rumble? I think Gunther wins the Royal Rumble. Oh, man. Okay. that's. And Patrick said punk, right? I think it's punk. I think it's punk. I think because here's the thing. I think part of Punk's negotiation with WWE is like, I'm gonna win the Rumble, right? <laughs> so, sure. Or else I'll just stay at home. Like if you're gonna give it to me, because <laughs> Punk's whole thing of leaving WWE is because he wanted to main event WrestleMania. That was I, a part of the reason. Yep. I, I think that ends up being Cody and and Punk at WrestleMania this year. <sighs> and I think you you end up with a. Uh, with uh, Rock and and uh, Roman as your your night two closer, and I think that the Gunther, uh, and this kind of leads into the next part here, I guess. You get Gunther and Seth open the show, and then you can have Cody and uh, and and Punk make it personal without a title as your main event on night one. If I'm Seth Rollins, and I'm the champion going into WrestleMania. And I'm kicking off the WrestleMania show and not main eventing with a title. I'm going to my filing cabinet and seeing when the WWE contract is up. And I'm calling Tony Khan and being like, hey, the day after this, I'm coming to AEW. I would not take that level of disrespect from WWE 
lightly. <laughs> That's insane to me if that happens. I, I, I saw today that Finn Balor's contract is up soon. Is there any chance he walks? Uh, the, Here's the thing. With a guy like Finn Balor, he's made so much of his money. This is the edge thing. So, like, if you already have made a ton of money and you still want to wrestle, but you're like, damn, I hate being in fucking Gary, Indiana on Saturday nights, then, yeah, to go over to AEW where you can work one night a week and go be with the Bucks and Omega and run the Bullet Club stuff back, like, you can still have cool matches. Again, and also the the sort of more freedom that you'll have in AEW, I think is going to be appealing to some people. Now, whether it's appealing to Finn Balor or not, I don't know. But see, here's leave the clubhouse behind uh, as fast as you can. Yeah. <laughs> here's the, here's the thing though. They are stacking that roster so heavily with no place to put people. And that's why you, you, you get these just thrown together matches because they just have so many different people to, to, to put into a match that they never build anything solid outside of one to two people. Finn Balor going over there, he is not going to be one of those two, one to two people. He but, doesn't have to have the Christian over there to suddenly put him in the spotlight. But Finn is a little bit different because Finn has a very good relationship with the people who are in power over there. Yeah. So it's different from like an Andrade who's just coming in with kind of no backstage political pool and a guy like Finn Balor who was in arguably the hottest faction of the 21st century, <laughs> a continent, you know, in Japan uh, with the Young Bucks and Omega. I mean, that, that that's three of the that's the only three EVPs that are left in the company. So yeah. uh, for him, it might be the same with Kevin Owens. That's why a lot of people thought Kevin Owens might walk a couple of years ago is because he had such a relationship with the Bucks. All of those guys kind of grew up together on the Indies. So like, I think more guys, it, the people who are going to leave WWE are either going to be the guys like Edge who are at the very end of their career and just want to do stuff like wrestle Minoru Suzuki because it's a dream. Or the guys who have relationships with Matt and Nick, or Matthew and Nicholas, and I guess <laughs> Ken, is it going to be Kenneth when he comes back? If he ever comes back, I don't know. If he has relationships with those guys when you walk into that company, but or you're a guy like Seth Rollins and you've been a top mainstay, and it would be absolutely completely asinine if you left AEW and were just like kind of done nothing with. If you were a guy like Seth Rollins. And then you got Drew, who's, who's, I guess his is the one that comes up quicker. I mean, would he succeed there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The thing with Drew, though, is going to be the same problem that, like, because now just Drew and Samoa Joe occupy the same space on the card, which is their monsters. And so I think if I was Drew, one, the money would have to be right. And obviously, WWE, if they want to keep him, they're going to throw the, the bag at him. And they're probably going to be able to offer Drew more money than what AEW is going to offer. Now, it also comes with a, a, a you know, a tougher schedule in terms of just being on the road. Uh, I think if I was Drew, I would stay in WWE. Yeah. I mean, that would seem like he's more fitted for that. I think if I was fan, I would go to, I'd go to AEW. You're up there in your 40s. Uh, you, you know the guys over there you know they're going to treat you like a star uh, so I, I think I would go take the take the, the lighter schedule for sure but you say that they would treat you like a star but I mean Jay White's one of their friends right uh, I mean true yeah but hey. I mean listen Jay just loses matches but he's on every damn he's on every show so maybe they're yeah. just buying their time you know, I, mean, I think part of Jay White's thing is they're going to, uh, hopefully, rightfully so, combine these trios titles. You know, they're not going to stay buddy buddy I, with the acclaimed. I, I really need them to do something with because, well, I, I, you know, my beef with ROH titles. Yeah, I think that's what's going. That's your probably match at Revolution is a is a unification for the the trios championship. But, I mean, yeah, that is a good point. I mean, you're looking at a guy like Jay White who came off of wins against Okada and was main event in Wrestle Kingdom, and now he is uh, doing stuff with Bishop Khan and pulling the chair away from him. 
in a match that doesn't mean anything. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of hoping maybe they just didn't want to like shotgun him to the top, you know, because of how maybe how it looked to some of the folks that have been there for a while. So maybe they're maybe I don't know maybe they're making him eat some L's for a while so that they can build him up. I mean, kind of like what they do with Swerve, right? Well, and Jay White was never on American television. Finn, right. ba- Finn Balor was in the biggest company in the world, was the first ever Universal Champion. You know, that the wherever you go in America, they're going to know who Finn Balor is. Right. So the last thing on the notes is WrestleMania guesses. We kind of kind of went through some of that when we were talking about the Raw title scene earlier, but... I mean, well, I, that was mostly the, the the only topic was the guys division there, or we didn't touch on like tags or anything. Do you guys have any other? You know, we we've talked about probably Jay, uh, Sami Zayn, and KO probably right. Um, yeah. Jimmy and Jay Uso, more than likely. Yeah, I think that <laughs> happens at the Rumble. You set that up at the Rumble. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I. I, I I go back to, and I'm not sure if this is going to be a, a Royal Rumble surprise or if this is an after Royal Rumble surprise, but I think you're going to get a as, as many of the the four horse women that are still standing in a match against Damage Control, and I think uh, Monet, I think we get Sasha back. That's why I was about to ask: Do we get her back at at the Rumble? And, and I think we get Jade finally making a debut at at the Rumble as well, maybe. Uh, yeah. I hadn't thought about her. I think you probably get. Uh, I think Jade and Bianca at WrestleMania. That would be one of my guesses because I don't. People have talked about Rhea and Bianca, but I think the Rhea and Becky Lynch thing is kind of a foregone conclusion at this point. Um, yeah. I don't even know. I don't think EO Scott goes into WrestleMania as a champion, but I don't know who. Maybe Bianca and Jade is for the championship. Um, I think Jimmy and Jay against each other. I think Sammy and KO against each other. Um, you know, as crazy as it sounds, just for the nostalgia factor, what else is damn Randy Orton going to do? Randy Orton and John Cena. Put them in a match together. He, he's only got three years left. So throw them as for who, who actually is the best wrestler of their generation between those two. Um and then LA Knight Logan Paul I think that that's another that that's yeah. been penciled in for probably a while um you know there's going to be somebody that's going to be really good that's left off the card like a guy like AJ Styles who's probably going to be you know he's he's in this match with Roman Reigns would not surprise me if he's not on the WrestleMania card at all now maybe he is cuz it is stretched over two nights um but it wouldn't surprise me if he gets he gets left off you got Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits will probably go up against Final Testament. I, I know, but I'm just telling you, it's gonna they're gonna put that I mean, on there just because. Yeah, it'll be that's a match. Save that shit for Survivor Series or something that's not Mania. Well, it is over. It is two nights, uh, and so you are gonna have to feel you, at some point. You're gonna have to feel time. Uh, the big thing where if they decide to do Roman and Rock at WrestleMania. Myself and probably a lot of other people do not give a damn about the match. So I only want to see a month's worth of promo battles, these two going back and forth. So if they're not going to do that, if it's just going to be The Rock shows up for one SmackDown or whatever, and then he's at WrestleMania, and we only get one face-to-face with microphones, I don't. that's not enough for me. That's probably what's going to happen, though, because Rock is, you know, you're going to have to shell out some money to get him on TV. So I know that they want, obviously they want The Rock on Mania and not like survive, it's like SummerSlam or whatever, right? So yeah. like, but you could, if you wanted to do the Cody versus Roman thing, then if Cody wins and Roman loses, then you could have The Rock come in and be like, Hey, I thought, you know, you were supposed to be the big bad man. You're the head of the table, blah, blah, blah. And then you could set up a match between them for SummerSlam. But I, boy, I know they just want The Rock on Mania for obvious reasons. Because the moment he steps in the ring, much like you got the holy shit moment with with Punk and, and Cody, the moment 
right in the middle of mania when they step in the ring and are just face to face the holy shit chance will will fill philadelphia stadium yeah yeah i'll, I'll yeah i'll give you that but the match itself after that moment it'll be just a snooze fest Oh yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, it's not going to be. It's, he's he's a damn near fifty year old man. He ain't yeah. gonna he ain't gonna be bringing his best work. I, I he's get also that. not going to win. No, like at, at least if you do Roman and Cody, there's a chance. Like, damn, do they screw well, I mean, Cody out again with Roman beating him? How, how much pull does he have behind the scenes now? Now that he's um, by his God given name, board director Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> well, I yeah. I'm about to say I don't know if he's the type of guy that would do that, but maybe. And I, I think he loses the match, but yeah, I think he would lose. Um, but man, talk Cody doesn't finish the story. They have already announced him as he's the cover of the video game. Yep, he's gonna have another WrestleMania loss under his belt. It, 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 does does uh, WWE 2K have a Madden curse? <laughs> it might have, it might start one. Uh, he might be the start of it. Do you? I mean, assuming he makes it to the main, makes it to WWE, do you think uh, AJ Styles comes out to the WrestleMania bitching about how not having a match, music hits that nobody will recognize except for a certain group of fans, then Okada comes out? Okada? Oh. Yeah, Okada. I don't think Okada's going to WWE. I would be shocked if that happens uh, because I don't think he wants to... You know, Osprey, it's already come out. He's not moving to America. He's going to stay in the UK where he wants. Okada would have to move to America if that happens. Um, I do know that there is a lot of... Not pressure. WWE clearly wants to sign another big Asian star because they are weak in that market. They've historically always been weak in Japan because that's a, a new Japan thing. Even when WCW was up, WCW was more popular than WWF over in Japan. AEW is more popular just simply because a lot more of their guys are on that television, right? Moxley is a main, has been a mainstay in New Japan since he's left WWE. Obviously, Osprey, who's going to come over, Omega, all these guys. So, uh, listen, Okada would be a big get for WWE. I just don't know if that is something that Okada would be interested in. He'd be a huge star, though. I mean, that guy's going to be successful wherever he goes. Yep. Well, I think that'll get it, unless you guys have any final thoughts. I think it's hilarious. that you, you, There's two things I want to say. It's hilarious to me that, what, two months ago, you came into a, a room and said... I'm done. And and now we just spent probably a majority of the last few podcasts talking about WWE over AEW because the quality of the shows have vastly changed just in that amount of time. I mean, part of it, maybe, but I also haven't watched it as much AEW either. I haven't seen the last couple of collisions. I didn't watch Dynamite last night. And, and part of that is just time restraints because... No, you're not um, missing it. And that's the other thing I want to talk. That's a part two of that. You had a dream match on Wednesday of, of Suzuki versus Copeland. And it was a, a dream that probably was better in everybody's head than it was in reality. Well, I think it was a dream. Sure. I think it was a dream for only one person, and that was Mr. Adam Copeland. I don't. I, there's never crossed my mind where I've watched Edge wrestle and be like, "Damn, I wish I could see him against Minoru Suzuki." That's never, never and, crossed and, my mind. And then we got another one coming up with Daniel Bryan and uh, Najera. Uh, Nagata, yeah. Nagata, thank you. I want. Like, I mean, the the, the Copeland match in Suzuki was was fine. Uh, I'll you know Danielson, I'll watch because I'll just watch anything that he does. Um, I guess the last only because AEW is just going to give up a lot of momentum anyway because it's Royal Rumble season. We're leading into WrestleMania, and, and that's the, the, the back half of it. Hot. Yeah, yeah. This is the time when that company is hot. Uh, but I'm fairly positive when Mr. Will Ospreay is going to start making his appearance on AEW here in the next couple weeks. He's going to have a match at Revolution. They said I, he's going to he's going to debut in February. Yeah, I think it's going to be mid February. So yeah. I mean, my the next month for me looks pretty rough, time constraint wise. We're getting ready to move, and uh, the the end of the season of the show that I'm editing at the moment um, is due 
mid March. Uh, so I'm going to be struggling trying to get that done and also try to move in the process. But but realistically, um, you are not missing anything on AEW. I mean, that's why. Like, I used to make it a point to watch it whenever I, you know, on the night it aired because I knew if I didn't, I might not get around to it. And um, last week I was able to watch it on the night it aired, but I knew when I didn't make it last night, I was like, there's no way I'm going to. And also just looking at the card, I just, I don't know. I kind of feel like they're, they're in a slump, um, which we talked about last week, you know, Um, and that's fine. It'll come back around, you know, they'll start building to the Wembley show in a couple months. I'm sure things will get heated up. Um, and it'll be a lot better, but I don't know. Part of me just wonders if they're like, fuck it, let's throw some stuff out there because we know we don't have the eyeballs because of the end of football season. You know, like you guys said, WrestleMania season's coming up, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I don't know, whatever. They'll get, they'll, they'll come back around. I'm sure. It's just when you're the, when you're the secondary brand, when you're the competition, I, you have to come out and throw fastballs every week. (laughs) Yep. You you, yeah. you cannot just go through slumps. Like I get that that's what they're having. You know, hopefully they bounce back from it. But like when when Monday Night Nitro was gearing up to beat WWF for those fifty whatever something weeks or whatever. Eighty three. Eighty three. Leading up to before they became number one, those shows were fire. Like you can go watch the first of Monday Night Nitro, and for that time. Macho Man was on there every week. Hogan was on there every week. Luger, Sting, Flair. There were never any weeks where the main guys were not. There would be some... You go back and watch some old Nitros. Flair's literally in the main event for like seven straight weeks. Or like it's Sting or somebody. Like They never took time off. And like I, I know that AEW's you know, bombarded with injuries. But like there are also times where guys are not injured and they're just not on the show. That was much of Hank Man's yeah. Hank Man's arc of last year. He just wasn't on the show. Yeah. So like when you're when you're trying to pull as many people into this fandom as possible, you you can't have these. You can't go months at a time where it feels like, man, I could have missed all of these shows and not missed anything with AEW. Yeah, you can't try to convince me that Hook versus Samoa Joe is a legitimate match. Yeah. If if I'm a casu- if I'm a casual fan, right? Right. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'll watch a little more WWE in the next month or two leading up to Mania. Um, Friday nights are a little easier for me, anyway. And then, but, and then you're golden from Mania on to to Midsummer when Roman continues his reign as uh, the undisputed. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> so that's why this is why people stop watching baseball fucking too long too long of an inning game this is damn we're 19 innings it's in the bloodline story we're rolling on it's 4 30 in the morning the sun's about to come back up we've been playing this ball game for forever we got the damn the concession stand workers out throwing a pitch because we don't have anybody <laughs> left in the bullpen this is it's time to wrap it up yeah yet still less scripted than a kansas city game <laughs> <laughs> the announcers fell asleep all right, well, y'all have fun next week. Um, I'll be, I'll have a drink in my hand somewhere in the middle of the Gulf, um, and I'll be back the following week. Uh, hopefully, you know, I think the Rumble will be fun Saturday night, um, and I will probably listen to the podcast on the way home next Saturday. So uh, if uh, I don't talk to y'all in the next week, I'll see y'all after that. And for all the listeners, we appreciate y'all listening. Um, we're gonna. We usually do Wednesday. Sometimes lately, we've been a little haphazard. We've had a lot of stuff going on. Uh, me personally, I know for sure. So um, we appreciate it. You can follow our network of uh, fellow podcasters at thealabamatake dot com. You can follow the Alabama Take on all social media, uh, various podcasts, sports podcasts, book podcasts, TV podcasts, Star Wars podcasts. A lot going on, and uh, we appreciate y'all. And uh, we'll talk to y'all next week. <laughs>